it all. The artist Ronald Draper, he got it right. We are Harlem strong and we are here to help one another. I've had, in the last three weeks, five cousins who didn't make it. Um, three of them died because of COVID-19. All three of them had pre-existing conditions. And the other two died of different causes. But every day that we wake up, it's a beautiful day. Right, my brothers? Absolutely. Amen. Every day. Thank you. Continue blessings. Thank you. This is my neighborhood. This is not only where I work, but it's also where I live. It's where I raise my son, and it's the Harlem that I'm born and raised in. This was designed by incarcerated women at Rikers. Isn't that gorgeous? Take care, my dear. Lunch was great the other day, too. It was really good. So one of the things that we do is every day for lunch, um, we eat at different places within the community. So, you know, we can talk about supporting the community or we can be about it. And that's one of the things, just one of the things that we do here. When Melba's joined our network, we were extremely happy to have them. I think it's a great restaurant that is so representative of the local community. I think it is really important to highlight these types of local businesses just because they mean so much to so many people. Frontline Foods is a grassroots organization that helps to fuel the fight against COVID-19 by purchasing meals from local restaurants to feed our frontline uh, workers. Since starting Frontline Foods, we've expanded to 59 cities, supporting over a thousand local businesses. And to date, we've delivered over half a million meals to our frontline workers. I think the black community has been hit hardest because of the food deserts, the lack of fresh fruit and vegetables and food within our community. There's a bodega, just look around, on every single corner. There's a Texas fried or a Kentucky fried or something's fried. Where are the farmer's markets in our communities? Kids end up at McDonald's, at fast food places. And the food there, is, it's not healthy for them to eat that on a regular basis. So then we get health disparities. We have high cases of asthma, high cases of obesity, high cases of heart disease. And so when something like COVID-19 comes, there's so many pre-existing -condi pre conditions that make it very difficult for us to fight these issues off. Thank you. I can hear. Thank you. Oh my God. I needed that. Armstrong? Oh my God. Beautiful. Thank you. I needed that. I love Harlem. Louis Armstrong and gospel all in one day. My life is complete. Now I just got to donate some food and I'll be happier. <laughs> my grandmother from Hemingway, South Carolina would go in her garden, pick collard greens, pick tomatoes, and then she would labor for hours over a hot stove and prepare meals for us. Before there was even a term coined farm to table, my grandmother was already, <laughs> already doing farm to table. We just didn't call it that. We just called it, Grandma went in her garden and she got them greens and she canned those preserves, but everything happens over food. And so I think it's only proper that us coming together during this time COVID-19, that's my give back. It's what I've learned. So when we give a plate of food to a frontline worker, to a doctor, to a nurse, it's our way of expressing our gratitude and our love for them. Okay. Thank you very much. And you know who that is, right? Hey. 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 Hey.
Wait, Joe wait, did the, did, the hips, did the hips give it Joe away? <laughs> well, thank you very much. We appreciate you, and we'll definitely enjoy this wonderful food. And thank you, Melba. Thank and you. Thank guys. you guys too. Thank you. We thank appreciate you. it. Bye. <laughs> Being born and raised here in the community, it was important for me to open up my business so that I can employ people that look like me. Giving people jobs and teaching them a skill is by far one of the best gifts that you can give them. The only restaurant that was here when I opened was the Chinese takeout spot on, on Frederick Douglass between 112th and 113th. Little did I know that by me opening here, settling here, that this would soon become Restaurant Row. When I chose this location for Melba's, I chose it because 114th Street was the most notorious drug block in Harlem. And I wanted to offer kids and people in, in my community an opportunity to have a choice. I wanted them to see. You can cross the street over there or you can cross the street over here. So this is a mural of someone who's lost a life. As a black woman, as a mother of a young black son, I am heartbroken. I am devastated. I'm afraid. I'm worried. There needs to be a recognition that America has a race problem. Before we can have a healing, we need to admit that there's a problem. How can you come up with solutions if there's no admittance of a problem? you give me a platform, I have to, to speak my truth. Black girl from Harlem, didn't go to culinary school, wasn't supposed to make it in a white male dominated industry. <laughs> what did I have to lose? Everybody told me I had already lost. So I had no place to go but up.